Hello again, this is Optics Lecture 3.1 um, on concave mirrors. The next three lectures are going to tackle curved mirrors and image formation and ray tracing and all sorts of things. So this one specifically is uh, on concave mirrors. And the essential question is, what do curved mirrors do to light? All right, I'm going to start with just some vocabulary associated with curved mirrors. There's two types of curved mirrors that we'll be uh, talking about. Um, the first is called a concave mirror. So concave mirrors are, they look like caves. Um, they are either circular or parabolic in shape, but the reflecting surface is on the inside of a concave mirror. The other kind of curved mirror is known as a convex mirror. Um, and of course, same circular or parabolic shape, but the reflecting surface is on the outside of a convex mirror. You've probably seen examples of both of these in your lives. Concave mirrors like um, those magnifying mirrors that you may have seen or you have in your house. And convex mirrors are those ones that let you look around corners um, or the ones on your car. Those are convex mirrors as well, your rear view mirrors. So the law of reflection that we learned um, in a couple videos ago uh, applies for curved mirrors as well. Mirrors, of course, are specular reflectors. But the tricky thing about the law of reflection is that the uh, normal line is changing direction as the surface curves. So I've drawn there kind of a model of a concave mirror and those little orange lines are the normal lines. So you can see um, this is why we practice drawing normal lines on angled surfaces because curved mirrors are basically by definition all sorts of different angles. The angle's changing as you move down the curved mirror. So um, on a convex mirror, of course, we have normal lines as well, but they're kind of um, angled outwards away from that curve. So any light rays hitting curved mirrors are still going to follow the same old law of reflection that we're used to at every single point on the mirror. The tricky thing is that um, those reflections look different everywhere because the normal lines are changing. So I just drew one reflection here on the concave mirror. You can see I reflected about that normal line at the top and um, I've got the incident light ray and the reflected light ray coming downwards. On the convex mirror, okay, similar light ray coming in at the same angle as the concave mirror had, um, but that light ray reflects somewhere really different because the normal line is angled really different. So the rest of this video is going to be focused on concave mirrors specifically. There will be another video for convex ones. Um, and we'll start with just talking about what happens in the whole concave mirror system. So um, you'll notice in this diagram below, we've got a, um, an, a, an axis labeled the principal axis. That is an axis of symmetry for um, this mirror, which means that we've got the same amount of mirror in the same shape above as we do below. Uh, it's on a normal line down the center of the mirror, which means that if you sent a light ray down the principal axis, it would bounce straight back, just like you'd see for a flat or plane mirror. Um, so we're going to be using that axis as a reference for a lot of our other discussions. The second thing you might notice is that all of those light rays, so if we have five photons or, or rays of light coming in parallel to the principal axis, they all kind of bounce down or up towards a single location or towards and through. They, this picture shows those light rays ending at that F, but they don't actually end. They actually keep going straight through it. Um, this is known as a converging mirror because it brings light rays that start off parallel together through a single location. Um, that location through which all of the light rays pass is known as the focus. You've probably seen or heard that word before. Um, and it is usually labeled with a lowercase f, although it shows an uppercase f in that diagram. Um, the distance between the focus and the mirror surface is sometimes called the focal length. Um, one important thing about this is that you know the existence of a focus depends on the shape of the axis of the uh, mirror itself um, ideally if you're good about geometry you know that a perfect um, mirror that sends all light rays to the single focus would be shaped like a parabola it turns out it's really tricky to make parabolic mirrors in the real world because it's hard to carve things into the shape of a parabola so the end of a circle um, is pretty close to the same geometrical reflections as we get from a parabola. So most real mirrors are made, um, are called spherical. So they're made of from a chunk of a sphere. Um, and if you have a piece of a sphere, the location of F is found halfway between the center of curvature of the mirror. So if you imagine this mirror was a complete circle, I'm gonna 
butcher this drawing, but in any case, if you imagine this mirror was a circle, um, that C would be the center of it, and um, the F is halfway between. So those are some just background information and vocab about concave mirrors. This slide talks about the process for ray tracing with a concave mirror. Uh, in general, we're going to follow the same steps we followed with the flat mirror to uh, create an image and figure out what that image looks like. This is kind of a schematic diagram of what happens if you have just an object located at a single point, and that object is sending out lights in all directions, just like uh, probably um, every object is doing with its diffuse reflection. It's got an infinite number of possible light rays, um, but some of those light rays are going to hit that concave mirror, that optical device. And that light is going to converge. You'll notice that that light does not converge at the focus. And the reason is because the focus is special. The focus converges parallel light, right? But the light coming from the object is not all parallel. That light is spreading out from the object. So those light rays, those incident light rays are not parallel with each other. So they're not going to converge at the focus, but they will converge somewhere else. And that somewhere else is where the image of that object is going to be located. So just like with the uh, flat mirror, we only need two of those light rays. They all end up going through the same spot. So we can choose any two of those light rays to discover the location of our image. Um, but that's the tricky part, right? It, it's actually really tricky to try to draw accurate reflections off of a concave mirror. And sometimes the, the diagrams aren't even perfect. Um, so there are two specific, very easy to draw rays that will give you the best results when it comes to ray tracing. And those two rays are shown in this diagram. Ray number one is, um, is the ray where the incident ray, so the object's uh, sending rays in all directions, but this is the, the particular ray that happens to be going towards the mirror um, parallel to the principal axis. And the reason we wanna choose that ray is because by definition, its reflection reflects back through the focus. So it's a really easy ray to draw. The first one that you'll draw, um, you know, starts at your object, then you just draw a parallel lines straight along the principal axis, hits the mirror, and then you just, you know, use a protractor or, or a ruler or something of that nature to draw a, a reflected um, ray that comes straight through the focus. The second ray is um, the ray that actually goes through the focus as the incident. So this ray starts also at the same point on the object, the tip of the object, but it's gonna go through the focus. Um, now we didn't really talk about what that does, but it turns out that you know light is symmetrical on its reflections, which we kind of talked about a little bit when we talked about the plane mirrors and how you could, anytime I can see an object in a mirror, it can see me as well. So the reason this is a good ray is because um, if we go through the focus, we're gonna reflect back out parallel to the principal axis because if we were at the other end, we were going in through that principal axis, we'd come back out through the focus. So these two light rays are pretty straightforward to draw. The first one goes in parallel to the principal axis and out through the focus. The second one goes in through the focus and then reflects out parallel. Then you'll notice that those two light rays are intersecting at a single point right there, circling it in red. That's going to be the location of whatever part of the object you started with. So specifically in this case, it's the location of the tip of the arrow because that's where my light rays originated through. Be really careful um, to use the intersection of just the reflected rays because there's a lot of other intersections, right? There's an intersection there at the focus. Um, some people get confused about that kind of thing. So you want to make sure that you're using the intersection of the reflected rays. And in this case, they actually do intersect, right? Those are real light rays that actually pass through the same spot. But there might be other cases where um, you never get an intersection. They're diverging. They're going outwards. And in that case, you have to pretend you are eyeballs located at the two um, reflected rays. And then you just work your way backwards and, and think about where they look like they would intersect even if they don't actually. So I could go through this whole process again from the bottom of the object, which is what we did with our plane mirror. I could do that same process, um, but to save yourself some time, you should realize that all light rays leaving the bottom of the object stay on the principal axis, right? They're going in principal, um, they've got to stay on the principal axis. That means any part of an object that is on the principal axis will have an image that is also on the principal axis. 
So we use this as kind of a time-saving device, right? I figured out where my top of the arrow was. I know the bottom of the arrow still has to be on the principal axis. Um, and that allows me to draw my complete image in there, um, connecting the top to the bottom of the arrow. As soon as you're done watching this video, I've asked you to go and do um, a worksheet where you practice ray tracing diagrams with concave mirrors. And those, um, the problems on the worksheet are the object is located in a variety of different locations from very far away, like further than that center of curvature, between the center of cur at the center of curvature, between the center of curvature and the focus, at the focus, and then between the focus and the mirror. And it turns out with a concave mirror, you get some really different images based on where the object is located. Um, so I have, I'm going to show you in just a second, a little cheat sheet for like basically what the answer should be. Um, but this isn't really something I would recommend you memorize uh, because it's a lot and probably sort of a waste of your time to memorize it. When I encounter a mirror and I'm trying to figure out um, what the object looks like, the best thing is just to do a really quick ray tracing. So the most important thing is that you can do those ray tracings, um, but this is something that you probably want to have in your notes as well. So this is like the cheat sheet based on the location of the object. So when the object is further than the center of curvature of the mirror, you should find that you create a real inverted reduced image. So something smaller than the object. Uh, when the object is located at the center of curvature, you'll get a real inverted life-sized image. And then between the center of curvature and the focus, you'll get a real object still, a real image still that is inverted, um, but now it's magnified, so it's really big. Uh, when the object is located exactly at the focus, um, you make a really interesting ray diagram um, because what actually happens is those reflected rays will come out parallel to each other. They don't intersect anywhere. Um, so um, that actually means your eye would be very confused. You'd see no image. When you, when you stand at the focal length of a mirror and look at that mirror, it just looks like blurry chaos. And I have these really nice mirrors, big ones. Uh, if we have live class at some point, I'll be able to show you guys what that feels like. Um, but in any case, you should know that no image is formed. And then the last um, category is when the object is located inside the focus. And when you're in that situation, it creates a virtual image, which means it's going to be behind the mirror. So the rays are going to diverge, right? You're going to have to imagine that those rays come together behind the mirror and it'll make an upright image that is magnified. Um, so that this is just kind of a cheat sheet. This will help you uh, check your answers for those worksheets. Make sure that your uh, ray diagrams create images that align with these. I'm going to try to do a demo here. It's a little bit hard because I can't actually see what it looks like while I'm recording it. Um, but I'm holding a concave mirror in front of the camera, and hopefully you can see there's an image in it. Right now, um, that is, I'm still in the, like, beyond the focus area. So this image is a real image that's being created, uh, and it's inverted, and you probably can't see exactly what the image is. But as I move in, at some point, that image kind of disappears, and we get a little bit of chaos, and and there's nothing. It's about here that the we're at the focal length for this uh, concave mirror. And then as I get closer, hopefully you guys will be able to see um, the image is now going to be um, my virtual image that is upright. Uh, so hopefully we get a chance to do this in class, but I thought I would give it a shot doing it on the camera as well. All right, that's it for this video. So please take a few minutes and review the essential question, which is what do curved mirrors do to light, specifically those concave mirrors. And um, it's really important that you guys go do some practice on these ray diagrams with concave mirrors. So go do that, and then you can pretty much check your answers with that cheat sheet that I gave you a little bit ago. Thanks for watching.